At the end of this video, you would be able to draw the dot and cross diagram for a simple covalent molecule. Covalent bonding usually involves non-metal atoms. A covalent bond can be formed between two of the same or different atoms. When the covalent bond is formed, electrons are shared. At the end, each atom will end up with a fully filled valence shell or what we call the stable electronic configuration of a noble gas. A simple rule of thumb to determine how many electrons are shared is I only share how much I need. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Hydrogen has one valence electron. It needs one more to complete its valence shell. Remember, the first shell holds a maximum of only two electrons. So each hydrogen atom would share one electron. When electrons are shared, we allow the two atoms to overlap and we put the shared electrons in the overlapping region. The shared electrons are referred to as the bond pair. Note that each atom now has effectively two electrons in the outermost shell. We can represent the bonding using a displayed formula where a straight dash here represents a bond pair and each bond pair contains two electrons. Now let's look at chlorine. The same goes for chlorine. Chlorine is in group 7, so it's 7 valence electrons. It needs one more to have a complete valence shell of 8 electrons. As such, it shares one electron with another chlorine atom. And we can represent the displayed formula of chlorine like so. Sometimes a question only asks for the valence electrons to be shown like here. But when there is a need to show all the electrons, remember to count them correctly. Let's move on to oxygen. Oxygen is in group 6 and it needs two more electrons to complete the outer shell. Since it needs two electrons, it will share two. An oxygen atom can share two electrons with another oxygen atom, and the resulting molecule has a double bond. So we represent the double bond with two lines. So note that now, after bonding, each of the oxygen atom has eight electrons, like so. We usually represent the electrons of one atom with a cross and the other with dots. The same goes for nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 5 and it needs 3 more electrons. And by now you would have guessed that it could share 3 electrons with another nitrogen atom to form a nitrogen molecule. The triple bond between two nitrogen atoms is strong and this is also the reason why a nitrogen molecule is chemically unreactive or inert. Again, after drawing the dot and cross diagram, it is important to check that around each atom, we have 8 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And for the other one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, for one atom, we use crosses to represent its electrons and the other, we use dots. When electrons are shared between two different atoms, things get a little bit more complicated. Let's look at the bonding in the water molecule. Oxygen. Oxygen is in group 6, it needs two more electrons. Hydrogen needs one electron to complete the outer shell. When hydrogen bonds to oxygen, you can see that uh, hydrogen satisfies its outermost shell of two electrons. 
Well, oxygen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 electrons, now it still needs one more. So how? Okay, we can get one more hydrogen to come in and bond to oxygen. Now we see that oxygen has a complete outer shell of 8 electrons. So overall, we see that a water molecule consists of two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom. That's why its molecular formula is H2O. Again, we can represent the bonding using a displayed formula where a single line represents the shared pair of electrons. So each line, we have two electrons. So in this water molecule, there are four electrons that are being shared because there are two lines here. Notice it is not necessary for all the valence electrons to be involved in bonding. Over here, four of oxygen's valence electrons are not involved in bonding. Let's go on to another example. Methane. Methane is a molecule formed between carbon and hydrogen. Carbon has four valence electrons, it will need four more. Hydrogen has one valence electron and it needs one more to complete its outer shell. A simple rule is to put the atom which needs the most electrons, in this case carbon, in the center. Now, we can have hydrogen bonded to carbon and hydrogen will have satisfied its outermost shell of two electrons, but carbon still needs three more. We can get three more hydrogen atoms to come in to bond to carbon. And this is the dot and cross diagram for methane. Notice that in this case, all its valence electrons of carbon are involved in bonding. Let's try another example. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a molecule formed between carbon and oxygen. And if you already know the molecular formula of carbon dioxide, you would know how many atoms are needed for bonding. CO2. This means we need one carbon atom and two oxygen. But why? Carbon needs four more electrons and oxygen needs two. If carbon and oxygen were to form only one single bond, oxygen would not be happy because it is still short of one because it has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. As such, oxygen would need to form a double bond with carbon in order to satisfy the outermost shell of eight electrons. You can see here that carbon still needs two more. It has one, two, three, four, 5, 6. It needs two more electrons. We need another oxygen atom to come in to bond to carbon. If this oxygen atom were to form only one bond with carbon, we will see that oxygen has seven electrons, one short of the eight valence electrons required. As such, oxygen we need to form a double bond with carbon. Now, we see that all atoms have 8 valence electrons. We can represent the displayed formula like so. Let's try ammonia. Ammonia has a formula NH3. Again, we put the atom who needs the most electrons in the center. In this case, nitrogen, it needs three more. We get hydrogen to come in. Hydrogen can form a single bond with nitrogen. And we see that there are still two more electrons that needs to be filled. We get two more hydrogen atoms in. And each of them contribute one electron. Now, we see that nitrogen has a complete outer shell of electrons. Notice that there are two electrons here that are not involved in bonding. 
So when you are drawing the dot and cross diagram, remember to include that in. Here is the displayed formula for ammonia. Practice drawing dot and cross diagrams for the following molecules, including the displayed formula as well. You can try starting with the easy ones, then moving to the moderate ones, and try something more challenging. Have fun!